Welcome to our lecture online. Before we continue showing the usefulness of the Dirac Delta function, we should become a little bit more familiar with how it actually works. So here we're going to do some simple examples how, how to um, evaluate some integrals that include the delta function. So here we have the functions. Here's one function, there's another function, third function, another function, another function, and all of them are multiplied by a direct delta function of some sort. And so we should be able to evaluate that. So here we realize that whenever we have something that looks like this, this should be equal to the function evaluated at the value that makes the delta function go to zero. So in this case, where x equals 2. So in other words, this equals the function when x is equal to 2. And in this case, that would equal the function when x is equal to pi over 2. And here that would equal the function when x equals negative 1, and so forth. So let's go ahead and work them all out. So in this case, that would be equal to the function evaluated at 2, so this becomes 2 times 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus 3. And so that would be 4 times 2 is 8, minus 10 is minus 2, plus 3 would be plus 1. Over here, notice that this is going to be the function evaluated at pi over 2, so this is equal to the sine of x equals to pi over 2, and of course, sine at pi over 2, which is 90 degrees, that's equal to 1. Over here, we need to be a little bit careful because notice that this would be a value, so this would be equal to the function evaluated when x equals negative 1. But notice the limit of integration doesn't include negative 1. With other words, there's never a value here where the function is evaluated times the delta function, the Dirac delta function, when this goes to zero within the limits of integration, which means it's zero for all values within the limits of integration. So in this case, this is simply equal to zero. But if it includes negative one within the limits of integration, then we can say that this is equal to, and of course we should probably put a line through it like that because that's not equal in this case, because it does not include the limits of integration, but here we can say that would be the function at x equals negative one, and so this would become negative one to the fourth power, which is simply equal to one. And finally, our last example, we don't have to worry about the limits, they're plenty big, so here, this would equal to the function evaluated x is equal to negative 2. So this is equal to the natural log of negative 2 plus 4, which is equal to the natural log of 2, and that would then be the end result of that integration. So you know that it's not hard to evaluate these integrals, but you do have to watch out for something that may look like this. And other than that, you simply say that if the value for x that makes the delta function take on that infinite value, then if that value for x is within the limits of integration, then you simply evaluate that integral by setting it equal to the function evaluated at the value that makes the delta function go to zero. And that is how it's done.